Hello, I'm Archie Luxury and welcome to the program and today I'm doing a video request for Gino O'Donnell. And Gino goes, hi Archie, I have a $20 burning hole in my PayPal account and a desire to hear your advice on video for a dilemma that I'm facing. Background, I recently unretired my Weiss hat, here's my recent watch history. On my 7.25, 7.5 inch wrist, 2010, end of to 2013, Omega Speedmaster Professional. Like stylish low key, look great with both the original steel bracelet and the black alligator leather strap that I had. Dislikes, plastic crystal became bored with it. I don't like, uh, I don't time things with the chrono, sold it off. 2013 end of Rolex 16610LN. That's a, uh, a Rolex date steel Submariner. LN with the green bezel. Like Submariner, need I stay more? Dislikes, I found it to be too iconic. Constant bezel, click spring issues, and I dislike the old style clasp. Sold December 2014 to January 15. 2015 Rolex one Rolex 16570 black that's an Explorer 2 not unlike my Explorer 2 same reference number okay let's have a look <coughs> uh, it's a V serial number mint purchased from a trusted seller on the Rolex forum likes movement and complication Dislikes, my eyes are failing me. I could not for the life of me read the dial with ease. I wish I had the chance to try one before I purchased it. Traded it with cash on top for January 2015 to present the Rolex 216570 black dial G serial number. Purchased in excellent condition from a trusted seller on the Rolex forum. Likes plus 1.5 seconds per day chronolite is amazing legibility is fantastic dislikes the dial looks unbalanced when their hands are in a certain position the brush steel bezel is prone to scratches it doesn't sit balanced on my wrist somewhat uncomfortable and it sits too a bit too high for my taste here's the dilemma I'm a one watch man. When it comes to a watch that is aesthetically unbalanced, I'm OCD. I look at my watch only. My, I, look at, I will look at my watch and only notice the unbalanced details if they exist. I like complications such as a date window and I actually use the GMT hand. I'm a tech guru by trade and run my own successful consulting services company. So tracking UTC is, a, is nice to have. I prefer black dials with stainless steel for versatility. I do not like excess bling, but I admire the sports model Rolexes for the right reasons. Since I've experienced the new Chronolite, I would have a hard time going back to Super Lenovo. Should I keep the 216570 or should I maybe start thinking about a 39 mil Explorer 1. I would lose the date GMT complication and I can't qualify how much of a loss that would be. Having said all this, I would enjoy your feedback. $20 coming your way from PayPal. Cheers, Gino. Wowzers! What a war and peace novel! Wowzers! And I gotta say, Gino. Mm. Interesting dilemma. And uh, I haven't had many one watch people on the channel. But I, I, I actually really admire it. I really admire that you want to just keep one watch. Okay. You've told me the past there. Look. Gino. 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 Nothing in this world that is man-made is perfect. Okay? Nothing is perfect. However, personally, myself, I'm a huge 
Rolex fan. I love, I love the Explorer 2. Polar, to go with my sponsor on the fridge, Polar Beer. Now, what would I say? Look, personally, Gino, my advice to you is, would be to keep the Explorer 2. It's a bad move to be flipping watches. If you're not sure, don't do it. Personally, I don't think the Explorer 1 is that balanced too. They, I don't like the size of the hand. So, none of these fucking things are perfect. Personally, if I were you, I would do one of two things. I'd either... I would either stay with the Explorer 2, it's a great watch, or, or if you're not happy with it, I'd be looking at something else completely. <coughs> if you're having trouble reading the GMT function, why don't you get a Jaeger LaCulture Reverso Duo? Then you can have one time zone on one and another time zone when you flip it. Uh, I I personally, I really love the new Explorer 2. And uh, I, I wouldn't be selling it. I, I think you've done enough flipping. And uh, you could have probably bought a Amiga Speedmaster Man on the Moon from what you've lost in flipping these fucking things. I, I don't think it's a good move at all to flip to flip as much as this, and I, and I mean, I don't understand why, oh, okay, okay, um, look, I think, I think none of the, look, i tell you the truth, the more watches I've got, the more picky and fussy I've become, nothing seems to be perfect for me, when I had the Patek, the, the fact that it was rhodium plated, because it's white gold, gave me the shits, the, um, the annual calendar, the sizing, I thought it was too high. Everything is fucking not perfect. You can get so fussy over these things. Nothing is perfect. Eventually, you've got, to, you've got to accept that the world is not perfect. Nothing will be absolutely perfect. And I think in your case, the Explorer 2, I reckon that's a fantastic watch. I really, really love it. Really love it. You've got the Ceramic Explorer 2. I reckon keep and enjoy. That's my advice to you. Don't flip it. You're going to lose money. A Rolex Explorer 2 is a wonderful piece. I love, I love my Rolex and I love my Breguet as well. And that's my Paul Smith cufflinks, by the way, there. Um, look, look, I, I quite like the collection. Um, I like the learning process you've gone through. I, I wouldn't be, I, I reckon the, the Explorer 1, I love the Explorer 1, but I, I, I think it, you, you'd really feel guilt if you went down the step. I, 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 I personally think stay with the Explorer 2, give it at least another six months to see if you can ride it out. Nothing in this world is perfect. Nothing in this world is perfect. Enjoy what you've got. And, uh... If that doesn't work, maybe a Patek travel time might be the answer. I'm Archie Luxury. Tell me what you think. And i got to say, I love how you got one watch. That is cool. See you later, fuckers.